Written by the founder of Vanguard, John Bogle, the little book on common sense investing explains the benefits of investing in index funds instead of actively managed mutual funds. Copyrighted in 2007, it contains timeless common sense approaches to guarantee your fair share of stock market returns, instead of speculating on receiving high returns from actively managed mutual funds that usually come at a premium. Simply put, the winning strategy is to own all the nation's publicly held businesses at very low cost. By doing so, you are guaranteed to capture almost the entire return that they generate in the form of dividends and earnings growth. Trying to beat the market is a loser's game, according to John Bogle. So why are index funds so much better than actively managed mutual funds? And why did John Bogle base his entire career on them? If you enjoy videos about money, personal finance, and investing, all topics that will help you better your financial future, consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notification icon to be notified of new videos. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. Lower costs typically mean higher returns. According to Warren Buffett, returns tend to decrease as motion or trading increases, never mind the expenses incurred. If more movement in a fund means diminishing returns, why pay so-called experts a premium to manage your money? Keep in mind that the companies employing highly paid managers to take control of your money and actively manage it must earn a paycheck. The money they're being paid is coming out of your pocket in the form of fees. Individuals who are supposed to be earning money for you are actually costing you money. Of course, there are some successful actively managed funds that outperform the market, but they're usually difficult to find and the performance has to be weighed with the expenses. Successful investing is about owning businesses and enjoying dividend payments and capital appreciation when the companies grow and earn money. Actively managed mutual funds are horrible from a tax perspective when compared to the average index fund, which is something many people don't think of when comparing the two. This is because the stocks within the mutual fund are purchased and sold throughout the year and taxes must be paid on any gains. Index funds that have fixed investments don't buy and sell throughout the year requiring investors to pay tax. The less active management involved within a fund, the better for investors in terms of taxes. Index funds require just enough management to match the index, so they really have to pay taxes the way an actively managed mutual fund does. Over a 35-year period, less than 1% of funds were able to beat the market by more than 2%, which is a small amount. If you have only a 1% chance of beating the market by any noticeable amount, is it really a wise choice to bet on those odds? You probably have a better chance of beating the market using a dartboard approach with individual stocks. On top of that, it's highly unlikely that those same funds will be able to achieve those market-beating returns over the next 35-year period due to management turnover and ever-changing market dynamics that are hard to quickly adapt to. It is possible that they struck gold on a few investment choices which bumped their returns, but that's no reason to think that the same will happen again in the future. Just because a fund has an excellent year doesn't provide any clues to future performance. The markets change extraordinarily fast, so what has worked for managers in prior years may or may not work in the future. For example, during some time frames, the energy sector could outperform the entire market. During other times, energy could be lagging while the real estate sector does much better. It's very difficult for fund managers to identify and act on these trends. Investors who own the entire market are able to receive gains from the market as a whole. Just take a look at the dot-com boom of the late 90s. For a few years, there was a huge boom where this sector dominated the entire market. Investors who were capitalizing on this opportunity were laughing at people who were investing in the entire market. But a couple of years later, there was a huge collapse, causing greedy investors to lose much of their money. There is money to be made by taking advantage of times like this, but it's far more risky and likely to result in a loss. Index funds are well established and have little changes, allowing them to be solid investments over long periods, and making it certain that they will perform well in coming years. Actively managed mutual funds have many different factors that play into their returns, including their managers, regulations, short-term investment choices, and more, making it much more difficult for a company to endure market-beating returns. A successful manager could quit, retire, take another job opportunity, or leave the company for a plethora of reasons. 
Mutual funds must comply with certain regulations that are established by the SEC that hinder potential investment returns. For example, managers can only have a certain percentage of their holdings in one particular investment at any given time, limiting their ability to take advantage of investment opportunities that are supposed to double immediately, decreasing the potential differences when compared to index funds. Why pay high fees to a manager that has many limitations when it comes to securing investments? As previously mentioned, a fund manager could get lucky for a few years, averaging a 15% return, but there's absolutely no guarantee that it's going to happen again. In fact, the opposite could be true. Investors paying 2% of their portfolio in annual fees will be happy when the manager has a great year with a 17% return, but they probably won't be too thrilled when the manager has a year returning only 7%, while still charging the same 2% in fees. With index funds, there's less unknown when you're tracking overall market performance. Own the entire stock market because not all indexes are equal. Bogle recommends investing in a fund that's diversified over the entire stock market, owning all different sectors like the S&P 500. A fund like this enjoys exposure to every section of the market, so when one sector outperforms, you receive some of the profit. But when a particular sector doesn't do so well, it doesn't have a huge impact on your portfolio. The same could be said for a total stock market fund that holds companies of all different sizes instead of only large companies held on the S&P 500. Investing in a broad market fund will ensure you're spreading the risk across all different sectors and companies so you can enjoy profits when things go well and of course some small losses of underperforming companies and sectors. The real money is made by investing and owning companies over the long term, not buying and selling or trading over short time periods. Even though this strategy might work in the short term, it's unlikely to work reliably for many years repeatedly. Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett's investing strategies both align with broad market index fund investing. In fact, Warren Buffett suggests that investors put the majority of their money in an S&P 500 index fund. Perhaps this is partly due to the fact that his company, Berkshire Hathaway, fails to beat the market and, as he recently said, a $10,000 investment in the S&P 500 in 1942 would be worth over $50 million today. Buffett might know a thing or two about investing since he started buying stocks at age 11 and has been able to achieve an astonishing net worth of over $80 billion. Buying the cheapest index fund will make you the most money, in theory. It's easy to choose index funds based on their cost alone when compared to actively managed funds because an S&P 500 fund is the same with Vanguard, Fidelity, iShares, and other companies, whereas with an actively managed mutual fund, it's hard to compare based on price alone because so many variables go into determining future performance. There are many more factors that must be considered, such as the likelihood of future market outperformance, holdings, cost, management, and other variables. In other words, mutual fund expenses don't correlate with their returns as they do with index funds. The expenses charged are often more than people realize. For example, an expense ratio of 2% on a $1 million nest egg is $20,000 per year when compared to the average index fund, which would only charge around one-tenth of that, or $2,000 per year. Just think of that $18,000 saved as additional money deposited right into your account. John Bogle recommends keeping most of your portfolio in low-cost index funds and investing for the long term. With no more than 5% of your money, invest in individual stocks, gold, and other more speculative investments to add some excitement and possibilities. Keeping a small amount of funny money in your portfolio will allow you to play around with riskier assets without getting carried away and betting your entire life savings on the next best stock, guaranteed to make you a multimillionaire. In all fairness, it's reasonable to have a small percentage of your account to use for more exciting investments since there's really no chance of striking gold with a broad market index fund. But if you have $1 million saved, don't allocate one penny more than $50,000 to these riskier investments. Investing in low-cost index funds will provide you with the most money in the future, according to John Bogle. Don't waste money paying mutual fund managers healthy salaries when those potentially market-beating returns will be diminished by higher expenses being charged year after year, 
even in poor economic conditions, when the funds are losing money. How would you like to be charged 2% of your portfolio even during a year when your investments lose value? Fund managers can retire, change careers, or for some other reason, hand investment responsibilities over to the next manager in line, perhaps someone without a stellar history. Instead, taking advantage of low-cost, broad-market funds provides for low-cost diversification. This situation is perfect for retirement investors without the headache and risk associated with choosing individual stocks. It's unlikely that your professional mutual fund manager will be able to beat the market over the coming decade, so there's really no reason to pay 10 times the cost of an index fund for that possibility.